Hey, and welcome to Talking the Chosen. Today we are in Season 2, Episode 3, simply titled Matthew 4, 24. And to just give you a quick synopsis, Jesus spends the day healing. His followers are having these discussions and these debates. An argument begins to ensue. Finally, Jesus appears. He is completely and totally exhausted after spending the day healing. Matthew 4.24 states, News about him, Jesus, spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Now, don't forget, Dallas Jenkins and the authors of The Chosen, they outright tell us that they will compress timelines, they will add dialogue and backstory, but their goal is to always share the truth of the gospel. And there's a lot of that in this episode. Okay, so you know they're trying to show a day in the life of one of the followers of Jesus, right? So this episode, it paints a picture of what life behind the scenes may have been like for his disciples. We see them talking, we see them playing games, we even see these little spats, these minor arguments that develop. At one point, we see Philip and Matthew. Philip is shown to be teaching Matthew the scriptures. Matthew is asking all these questions about the scripture. He's fervishly taking notes. Once again, I love how the Chosen portrays Matthew as being this very detailed individual, which when you read his gospel, Matthew is extremely detailed. You see, the Chosen seems to be depicting Matthew's propensity also for quoting the Old Testament. Did you know in his gospel, Matthew quotes or refers to the Old Testament more than 60 times. I love how in this episode, Philip, Philip makes this statement to Matthew. He says, Matthew, no amount of learning can get you closer to God or make you more or less precious to him. He's always right here, right now, with you and for you. Oh, what a powerful statement that was. And while Jesus was healing, his disciples, they're sitting around the campfire and they're having this heated discussion, right? I mean, Thomas says, what is happening? I mean, what are we part of? Philip makes a statement, with this fame comes enemies. You will be hated too. Big James, well, what would you have thought? Lots of talk about fighting the Romans, about opposing this oppressing government. Mary Magdalene makes this statement and says, I think he's here because we cannot be holy without him. In little James, I don't know how many would believe in him if he wasn't healing them. And then Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus, has this discussion with the, the women and his disciples. She talks of how when she gave birth to Jesus, how Jesus, the Son of God, the one who created the heavens and the earth, needed her help. And she thought to herself, is this really the Son of God? I mean, she was going on and talking to the disciples saying, he needed me. And she wondered how long it would last. And then she went on to say, he doesn't need me anymore. As a mom, it makes me a little sad at times. I don't know, but you as a parent, at times I feel the same way. And then after a long day, a long day of Jesus healing, the disciples kind of trying to control the crowds. The disciples are, are sitting around the fire and they're talking with each other, right? And, and they're asking these questions. And one of the questions came up as like, what would you do if you had money, right? And they talked about what they would be doing if they had money. Then they had, there was this part where they had camp, uh, campfire confessions on how they broke the Jewish laws or the Jewish food laws. And then there's all these several attacks on, on uh, Matthew. I mean, what do you think? Do you think that's plausible or not? You know, I'd venture to say it probably is. I mean, don't forget, Matthew was a tax collector. Uh, the Jews considered him to have betrayed his own people to work for Rome, who was hated. The, the tax uh, men, they lined their pockets with the money of their fellow countrymen. They were detested. They were despised. They were ostracized by everyone. And so I could see it would be difficult for the disciples to simply accept Matthew. And then all of a sudden, this arguing, it begins to escalate. 
And then Jesus approaches. He is completely and totally exhausted from the day of healing and the day of being with the people of the region. And all of a sudden, the arguing quickly stops. Why do you think that was? I mean, why do you think, as soon as Jesus showed up, their arguing stopped, their focus changed from Matthew and arguing to Jesus. And what do you think? Was there any irony in Mary being there to help Jesus? She went and she wiped his brow. And Jesus even said, Ima, mother, I don't even know what I would do without you. I thought it was a powerful episode. But once again, Dallas Jenkins and the authors of The Chosen, they tell us that they compress those timelines. They add backstory, right? And they add dialogue just so that we would more fully understand the gospel. And in all honesty, this entire episode was basically backstory. Hey, thanks for joining me. You have a great day. God bless and live love.